It's been eight years since the first Red Dead Redemption. Set in 1911, Rockstar San Diego boldly set out to show America in a process of rapid change. The Wild West is depicted on the decline. The frontier is in its twilight days, as the modern revolution sets in, paving the way for railroads, electricity and civil commerce. It's far from perfect, a friction between the old and new streaks through John Marston's story. It's a division that flares up starkly in Armadillo Town. Between the bandits that ride its high streets and the shop signs that flank them, the sleaze of the saloon bar and the order of the station across the road. Rockstar's strength is in stitching such small details together, bringing any landscape, any era to life. The release of Red Dead Redemption 2 then, which is set in 1899, 12 years before the first game, offers a fascinating snapshot of America at an even earlier time. It's a period where outlaw culture, the bandits and the highwaymen is still in full force, and settlements are in a process of growth. Now there are location spoilers ahead, and so if you are keen to see Red Dead Redemption 2 completely afresh, I'd recommend looking away now. Okay, last chance to look away. Still here? Then let's begin. Red Dead Redemption 2's world is huge and filled with surprises. Not least, it turns out, because the original Red Dead Redemption's map is included in the sequel, barring the Mexico area. It isn't a copy-paste of the original terrain either. Rather, Rockstar gives it a complete overhaul, rebuilding every point of interest to emphasize that regression in time. It's possible to compare the two games this way, to see the touches Rockstar makes to preserve historical accuracy. Red Dead 2 being set 12 years in the past means the chronology of the two games must be believable, and that clearly comes with artistic challenges. But on the other hand, RDR2 also shows a huge advance in the Rage engine itself. Right then, credit where credit's due. This is the PS4 Pro version of the sequel, progressed to around 70% of the story, a save state kindly donated to us by Eurogamer's review editor Martin Robinson. Now it's possible to venture south with only a few missions under your belt. Access to Blackwater Town and Tall Trees, for example, is available this way, but you're hunted down on sight. Assuming you make it through this alive, traveling further south triggers an automatic death. You're not meant to be in this region too early. Hence, we're using our advanced PS4 Pro save for Red Dead Redemption 2, rather than on Xbox One X, where progress isn't as far along. All of this is captured at 4K2, with a reconstructed 1920x2160 image on Pro. The comparison point, well Xbox One X plays its part right here. I'm running the Xbox 360 version of Red Dead Redemption through backwards compatibility on X, which pushes it to a native 3840x2160 plus two times multi-sample anti-aliasing. It looks incredible this way, crisp and sharp. On the grounds of image quality and frame rate, it's the best way to play the original game today though it does have clear technical limits next to the sequel, as we'll see. Indeed, while the sequel set 12 years in the past, the technology realizing it is eight years to the better. The horsepower of current gen machines allows for everything to be rendered at a far greater level of detail. Higher RAM allocation opens the gates to improve texturing, grass transparencies, and animations. Atmospheric effects like volumetric lighting produce a more accurate sense of spatial depth while materials are rebuilt to suit the new lighting model. Not to mention the game's wildlife, which is of course a big focus on the latest Rage tech. The sequel overcomes many of the original game's limits. Bearing in mind Red Dead Redemption was only first designed to be seen at 1280x720, quadrupling the pixel count to 4K on X shows its rough edges. In big towns, you get half and even quarter frame rate animations on characters in the distance. That slow update creates a bizarre stutter effect movement far away, one we weren't meant to catch back in 2010. Of course, all of that is changed for the better in the sequel, with its vastly pushed out LODs. It's likewise for shadow filtering, an obvious weak point on the original, with shade filling out past an obvious cascade on the ground. The technical overhaul is impossible to overlook, but there's also an artistic angle to consider. Clearly, an overlap in locales involves a careful thought process from Rockstar to determine what does and doesn't change. Armadillo Town Saloon, an iconic haunt from the first game, has a swathe of small details that either make a return, are upgraded for technology's sake, or altered to show it in a younger state. For example, take the piano in the corner. 
Would this piano be the same after 12 years or a different model? Has it been well maintained or battered and replaced? Given so many assets are reworked on the latest Rage Tech, it's a question posed by every item in the saloon. The piano? The answer it seems is that the same upright model has somehow survived the intervening years. There it stays in the corner. The same details are chiseled into its body, and the difference is largely technological. RDR2's piano features an upgraded wood material in place of the old Xbox 360 texture and factors in physically based lighting. Light streaming from the left alights a coat of varnish on the wood as you pass, underscored by its new white set of ivory keys. By comparison, it's a low resolution texture in the first game. It shows clear signs of ruin too, being 12 years on. Time hasn't treated it well, the keys are dirtied and the bodies muddied, but it's still recognisably the same design. It's a logical step into the future, even if the technology rendering it isn't as advanced. Let's consider the rest of the room. The pattern stair carpeting, portraits and even the deer head mounts on the walls return. They're all upgraded in overall detail, but intended to stand in for the original game's rendering. Curiously, there are even extra details like a main carpet across the room and new wall mounts, only in the sequel, despite predating the original. It's arguably an artistic flourish gone too far. Playing along with the fiction, these could have either been replaced or removed by the owners after years of drunken misuse. Equally plausible is that Rockstar simply wanted to cram more detail, with the resources available on PS4 and Xbox One, into such a memorable spot from the original game. Armadillo's piano and its saloon offer a micro-level example. The bigger picture is even more astonishing, especially across the town streets. Armadillo's detailing is similar. Red Dead Redemption 2's winds below dust through the high street, but in matching the time of day, many of the same buildings are clearly fixed in place. The bank, general store, gunsmith and general practice are unmoved. Only now they're decorated with more crates. Small details are added to the station too. The sequel adds swinging doors on the front porch, another example of technical progress that possibly flouts the series chronology. This is entirely missing in the first game, but it's easier to simply see RDR2 as the definitive rendering of the scene, the way it should be. From high on up, the surrounding terrain sees a grand change too. Draw distances stretch out much further in RDR2 and it replaces the low-res grass tufts of the original with neater pockets of fauna, all properly shaded. Cacti and rocks are introduced too, while dust spreads more thickly across the plains, lit by a morning sun to create a fuller, denser appearance. It's strange to see the rocks and hill mounds adjusted significantly towards the horizon. It shows Rockstar really did go in to recreate everything afresh. Overall though, it's still accurate enough to the landscape we saw 12 years prior. The passing of time is easier to trace where people have settled. McFarlane's ranch is a great example. RDR2 has it covered in crisp green grass and flowers in bloom, a seasonal change that contrasts the arid dry tufts of the original. Between the two points in time, its staff have cut down trees, opening the line of sight across the ranch. This is key. The sequel shows this area as in growth, and an entire barn is simply missing in the sequel. A dust track leads to where it will be, but it's a spot that expects to see a lot of change in the coming years. Blackwater Town takes this even further, a settlement that's already well developed in the original Red Dead. This is where we see some unusual choices from Rockstar, some of which make sense, others less so. On approach, major details are deliberately missing. Its train station and tracks have yet to be built, and the Minink supply store ahead is being propped up with wood supports. The real estate and law office stick in place too, but bizarrely, the buildings themselves are radically redesigned in their materials. Taking the Blackwater Hotel as an example, it sports a redesigned wood and glass front, with arched stone windows above. It looks vastly better in the sequel, but should it? There's another example straight ahead. The main Blackwater clock tower is completely redesigned. RDR2 renders this with a wooden fence up front that's removed by the time of the original game, where a gazebo stands instead. The height of the clock portion is lowered on RDR2 and the building's base is wider. 
Again, it's hard to see such a radical change like this occur over the course of 12 years. The building itself is rebuilt from scratch. It's a case of the sequel's upgraded Rage tech and a new art team stepping in, taking liberties to revise the past to simply make a better looking asset. That is, even if it doesn't fit in squarely with the original design. It's a mixture then. The question is, where do you draw the line between a technical progression and a change that truly fits the story? Here on the outskirts, the church walls are built with high quality stone pillars in the original, detailed brickwork that's filled in between by intact metal spikes. That's in 1911, but if we pull back the years to 1899 in the sequel, the styling is completely different. This fancy brickwork doesn't exist, and instead we get dull grey stone for all the supports. Meanwhile, the fencing is in far worse condition, bent and warped out of shape. RDR2's slightly ruined look makes sense, but it's a detail that doesn't make it into the original, likely because of technical constraints. On balance, it's great to see all these spots embellished. We are nitpicking of course, and the town areas are a goldmine for seeing how deeply Rockstar has invested in its attention to detail. For a game so particular about its history, it shows the shift in culture and technology in a way few other game series have achieved. Perhaps the last stop on the tour into Red Dead Redemption's past is the woodlands. Taken at a canter, the tall trees area is a genuine visual treat. The flora and fauna are meticulously designed here, and the interaction with a mid-afternoon light goes far beyond the original. A light shaft effect worked well for the first game, and the forest had a surprisingly dense appearance for the time. It was well executed, but it goes to a whole new level for RDR2. Proper volumetric lighting fills in between each tree, and the ground level is enriched by a fuller swathe of grass and idle woodland animals. Passing the Manzanita post, it's easy to see this as a firmer fixture of the world than we might have expected. The most substantial change is to the greenery surrounding it though, certainly on a technical level. With the addition of post effects like Blur as we ride, Red Dead Redemption 2 frames a beautiful scene with a more photographic sensibility, avoiding the stark, overly raw look to the original's grass textures and repeated tree assets. Gone are the small cases of Lord Poppin we had in the original game too, giving us a clear view of a fully rendered thicket ahead. Rockstar's choice to revisit old towns, woodlands and deserts in Red Dead Redemption 2 offers a rare opportunity in analysing graphics tech. Jumping from 2010 to 2018, it draws a clear line between two huge technical milestones of their eras. The first game is based squarely on last gen technology, but maximised the potential of Xbox 360 and PS3 with a convincing open world ode to the dying wild west. The sequel, appropriately, uses superior PS4 and Xbox One hardware to show an untamed wilderness. One where forests and deserts are replete with organic detail. What's also clear is, Rockstar's trademark attention to detail is more often than not consistent, and it's the stacking up of these small points that makes the picture complete. Not every change makes sense in the chronology of Red Dead Redemption 2's lore, but as a technical pursuit, it's astonishing to see the before and after. As a glimpse into the past, using present day technology, there isn't anything quite like it. Anyway, that's all from me today. If you did like this analysis and want to see more, please feel free to like or subscribe to our channel. And as ever, ring the bell to get notifications as soon as each video lands. To see this 4K video at source file quality, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. Meanwhile, to get in touch directly, please use Twitter. But until next time, thanks for watching.